M0 FXV ICOM IC7300 Mark II due to land any day now, possibly the 12th of December, but please check with your retailer. I'm in the UK, be different for USA and the rest of the world. So I sat here and I thought, well, let's make a, a list of the, of the things that are really important to me. The first one is HDMI output. The reason is I want to put my radio on a table, get myself a budget monitor, put it behind it, and then have and, and enjoy using that, that lovely, beautiful screen, you know, bigger. And I looked up and it does say that the HDMI output does carry audio, and I didn't know that. And it's very handy for me as well, because I can pipe it into my computer and make videos, but that's not the, my motivation. I just like the thought of being sat in my kitchen with a set that I can move around, quite easily plug in my i've got so many old monitors here from computers that i've had in the past and i've got this amazing experience right in front of me so looking forward to that so i made a list and i thought i'd go through the um the different things that appeal to me now one of them was that it covers the 70 megahertz band so over here in the uk we can talk on 70 megahertz and the activity um is okay yeah uh, it, it depends where you are. Different, you know, different parts of the country have more activity. Now, a new one for me that I noticed is that it covers, and I saw this video today. Big thanks to M Zero, Juliet, Charlie, Foxtrot. Um, it covers the uh, the five megahertz band, and I thought five megahertz. What's that? And I've never used five megahertz. Um, so you can see here, 60 meter band. So definitely going to be checking out that one and more information on the Radio Society of Great Britain about that as well. Uh, back to the leaflet, I have a leaflet here and I thought, um, let's scroll down, it says here, receive antennas. And massive thank you to ICOM for creating this brochure because it, it really clearly shows you the the reason to go from the 7300 to the 7300 Mark II or possibly to choose the 7300 Mark II over, and I'm not recommending anything, the the Yesu 710 series um so it's definitely a hard decision because this is going to be by the time it's delivered you're talking 1380 pounds um so in USA what's that 1600 dollars when you can you can actually get uh, a Yesu 710 now for 900 pound that's a big difference and you do get that external display and it's a fantastic set i've still got mine here so HDMI here it says at We'll just quickly read what it says officially here. And uh, at first, ICOM's H50 megahertz radio is the 7300 incorporates HDMI. And then it goes on waterfall menus can be shown on a large monitor and audio. It's, it's clearly there. So that's a big deal to me. RX antenna connectors for BPF preamps and receiving antennas. So I'm interested how that's going to work. So the RX antenna in out connectors enable you to take advantage of antenna characteristics for optimization, optimized reception, such as avoiding interference and QN, external band pass filters and preamps can also be connected to that. So are we going to be able to listen on a, a different antenna that maybe our transmit antenna is in a place where it's it, it's not the best location, but we can put a receive antenna in a better location, also connect on that. You've got band pass filters, preamps, and um, just says receiving antennas. And so we can optimize our receiving and then transmit on the transmit antenna. We're going to be able to select our receive and transmit antennas because that's something I can do on my flex radio. And then you've got this whole diversity thing where you can sort of balance between the two antennas. And and somehow if you're if you if you've done it, because I haven't, you can enhance your receive even more. So that's definitely a big plus. And then I wrote it down here, RSBA1, that it says here you do not need a server. Okay. Um, and we now we know we've got an Ethernet connection in there so with the rsba1 software see if i can get a photograph of that so you've got this image here now with the 7300 you can use this but you have to if you want to do it wirelessly you have to run a server and many use wfu uh, to connect this wirelessly um, and 
you effectively connect the USB cable from your 7300 to your PC, you run a server, and then you can use apps like SDR Control and connect wirelessly. It is doable. Well, you're not going to need to do that with this device, with the new 7300, because it's got an Ethernet connection, and it's saying that you won't need to run a server, and there's going to be a, a new new selections on the control panel panel for RSBA1. Let's take a look. And you'll see that you've got this extra selection in the menu for network now, and that's going to allow much quicker operation to the RSBA1 system. OK, the next one on my list is the built in CW decoder. It looks very straightforward. Go into the menu, tap CW decoder and set the parameters. And here it is another first. ICOM HF50 7300 can decode Morse code signals without using a PC or external equipment like it does for RTTY. The decode settings can be customized. So yeah, that's definitely one on my list. Let's scroll a bit further down. And this says USB type C port with dual com and audio. The 7300 Mark II provides USB C port with dual virtual com ports and audio so that's going to be for your fta type programs but and it's the fact that they've done it so you can use two applications simultaneously such as fta login contest software with just one cable and cw decode output to the usb port now uh, it's oh yeah sorry that's an add-on that you can't put it on the usb port right okay fair enough and you've still got the the, the the amazing waterfall the audio scope the swr you can record it can transmit cw and voice built-in tuner multi-dial knob these are all things that are on the 7300 they have they have improved the receive technology on this device as well so have a quick look at the rear here four pin plug ground pl um, PL, well, there's only one PL or SO239 antenna connection, but now you have got the ability, I suppose, you could put one of your other antennas on these SMA connectors here. Uh, your antenna tuner, if you need, but there's a built in tuner and it does still do emergency tune. And there's your 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 12, 13 pin jack, speaker out and keyer in. Uh, it's all itemized here at the back actually looking at it i'll send out alc send key external speaker remote uh, there's your lan connector hdmi usb c so yeah that's the fan looks very similar regarding the battery a lot of people bring up the battery i feel like it's the same as it was they may have in improved the size of the battery that's in there or changed the battery type but if you leave this turned off for a long time, as far as I can see, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, it, the, it's not going to hold its time. It's not going to hold the time. You're going to have to reset the time. Yeah, the, the idea is you should be turning this on, you know, every, I would say, every few months at least, or, or the battery is going to run flat. You know, the battery for the internal clock. And there's a new section here that they've added, and it's called RMDR, okay? Improved RMDR and phase noise characteristics. It's improved to about 12 dB typical, and transmit phase noise characteristics are improved by 12 dB. So if you go down, it says, what is RMDR? And it says, RMDR, reciprocal mixing dynamic range, is a key indicator of how much receiver sensitivity is degraded by strong nearby signals. A higher RMDR value means less blocking from adjacent signals. In general, lower LO phase noise results in better RMDR performance. Then you've got this uh, section where they're talking about the heat generated. They're showing a photograph here of the 7300 and the 7300 Mark II, and there's an obvious lower heat generation. I've never really had a problem with that kept keeps you warm in the winter but anyway it's still something that they've done and it reduces power consumption from from 0.9 amp to 7 0.7 amp that's good and of course the front let's have a quick look at the front now i think visually you don't see anything apart from the blue button and i said it the other day i said oh we could order a blue button change our 7300 green button to blue and people will think it will look the same wouldn't it because i can't see 
any physical differences. I'd like to know if the screen has been improved, um, if it's sharper and clearer, or if it's the same. I mean, it's a very, very good screen. Uh, as far as I can see, it's very hard to improve. But as you can see, you've got your, if we just go with the large knob here, twin PBT, you press it, the filter shows small buttons underneath notch nr noise blanker and preamp attenuator as well if you press and hold volume and squelch when needed because yeah you can put in 10 meter and 6 meter repeaters here and uh, there is um uh, rt systems do software for programming memory channels but there is actually a free one that i found i'm gonna i'm gonna make a video on that with my 7300 mark one which i which I've got and I'm I'm actually don't want don't want to sell it. So I'll be able to do side by sides on these. I don't think you're gonna actually see a massive difference. But if you're in the market for a Mark II anyway, or you just fancy having the latest model, then um, you know, I think this is a good choice. So I think you buy this now, you'll still have it in ten years time. Work that one out, divide it by ten years. It's not gonna cost you a lot, you know, hundred, hundred and fifty pounds a year. And you don't forget you can still sell it. Because this in 10 years time will still be worth 700 pound or more depending on inflation and um, tariffs <laughs> any joking built-in tuner emergency tuner and there goes my phone so i think that's about it so i think it's exciting times remember 12th of december onwards bye for now